good. Ask for to post it? Yeah. Email it to me too. Thank you very much. No problem. Mind me. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to go on YouTube. Actually, it might. I'm Cynthia Vespia. Um, I've been writing since I was about eight years old. Um, partly edited in journalism and freelance stuff. I was the uh, copywriter for Planet Hollywood for about two years. Um, I mostly write fiction novels. I do fantasy and contemporary thrillers. I'm also a certified personal trainer uh, and I have a background in martial arts and competitive fitness. So. I guess I'll use this one. This one? Right. Yeah. see, you know, um, uh, instead, of, instead of the person telling you, say you've got a character who's telling you what there's you know what's going on. You turn it into um, uh, seeing a narrative, paraphrase rather than quotes. How, how do you do that? Yeah, I just wanted to jump in here because when she was saying to get the emotion um, that you had to reenact with the emotion, um, that happens a lot with fiction as well because you write what you know. Um, in my life, I'm, I'm coming from a little bit of different background than these three. I'm not really necessarily involved in the crime, but um, I have been through a lot of close personal tragedy in my own family. So uh, I've had to approach that in a lot of my writing. And it's difficult, it really is, when you have to get down into the recesses of your own soul to project that onto a page. But it's, it's almost a necessary evil because you want to evoke that certain emotion um, and engage the readers and, and display the characters in a certain way. I actually, there's a movie that just came out, I don't know if you guys are familiar, it's called The Words, uh, Bradley Cooper. Excellent film. But there was a line that stuck out for me. Um, Jeremy Irons' character says he, he wrote this one novel and he never went back to writing because he was afraid to go that deep again. I've actually experienced that myself. Um, my father actually just passed away last month. So dealing with those emotions and trying to write again and that's all that's coming back to the surface. It, it's very, very difficult, like she was saying, when you have to reconnect with that. Um, but if you can balance it in a certain way, it comes off across the page beautifully, so. I, I would say this too, if you are, are, does anyone here like writing? Yeah? Okay. Is anyone here writing cop stories or about a detective, a female, a male, or whoever? Okay. Um, I'm just the opposite, right? And I think that's kind of what has, what has made me as good as I am um, at what I do is that I never, um, and I've been doing this for, for 13 years, you know, so I'm not, you know, I'm not like salty or anything, but, um, yeah, but I, you know, when I, when I walk into um, a parent's house and they tell me, you know, that their daughter has been, whatever, their daughter was kidnapped or that, you know, a father, I walk in and I see a father crying over his daughter who's been beat, you know, and her eyes are bloody and, and he's in tears and the mom is frantic, um, I use all of it. I use it in real life. I, I because it reminds me of why so, I'm doing what I'm doing. You're right. I don't have the same background as them, so fortunately, I haven't had those kinds of experiences. But I have come close. There was a couple years back, a woman was walking just with her baby in, in a stroller, like she did every day around the same time, and a guy came out of his house with a battle axe and proceeded to beat the woman and her child. Uh, the child died. The woman, I believe, lived on disfigured. Um, turns out he lived on the next block from me. So uh, went by, saw the yellow tape, was like, time to move. Um, <laughs> the other one, um, most recently, there was a guy who tried to rob Dairy Queen with the samurai sword. Don't know if anybody saw that in the news. It made international news. 
But uh, so the Dairy Queen owner was there by himself. He fortunately had a firearm with him, proceeded to shoot the sword wheeling maniac. This is uh, up the street from me in my shopping complex. So narrowly avoided that one, actually pulled in. Yeah. Yes, right there, yeah. That Albertsons is uh, where I used to shop all the time. Used to. So when I pulled in and saw the yellow crime tape, I'm like, what's going on? Oh, guy got shot, I was trying to, I mean, he was uh, casing different places to decide which one that he was going to go in with this sword, swinging crazy. Um, one of my most vivid memories was when I was in elementary school, and this just happened to return to me recently. I was uh, waiting for my dad to pick me up, like always. These two people pull up in a car, and they're like, hey, your mom sent us. We're going to give you a ride home. And uh, something in me at that time just made me back away from the car, and I just shook my head. I'm like, I don't know you. And then they sped off down the street, and right behind them, my dad pulls up, like always. So narrowly avoided something really bad right there. But the closest thing that I have to, to this kind of an experience, um, back a couple of years in 1996, my oldest brother actually was the victim of a murder. And he was actually shot in the back of the head by a, a man who was training to become a Henderson police officer. So um, that's a little bit of a memory that, that will always stick with me. Uh, it's not something that you get over easily. I was pretty young at the time. It was pretty violent um, and pretty extreme, but the other thing that I can draw from if I can lighten it up a little bit, with my fitness background, I actually use that in one of my novels, uh, the Demon Hunter series, because what I have going on there is the man is actually learning his trade to become a hunter of demons. So what I did is I pulled from my training and I actually incorporated a lot of the martial arts skills that I learned, a lot of uh, what I dealt with during competition, and I put that into the novel. So, like Chris was saying before, you can you actually draw from personal experience and add that and sprinkle that into you or to your novel, and it makes it just that much more realistic uh, that maybe somebody might who has gone through something similar might attach to it. So, so back to you're right. I don't have the same background as them, so fortunately I haven't had those kinds of experiences, but I have come close. There was uh, a couple years back, a woman was walking just with her baby in, in a stroller like she did every day around the same time. And a guy came out of his house with a battle axe and proceeded to beat the woman and her child. Uh, the child died, the woman, I believe, lived on disfigured. Um, turns out he lived on the next block from me. So uh, went by, saw the yellow tape, was like, time to move. Um, <laughs> the other one, um, most recently, there was a guy who tried to rob Dairy Queen with the samurai sword. I don't know if anybody saw that in the news, it made international news. But uh, so the Dairy Queen owner was there by himself. He fortunately had a firearm with him, proceeded to shoot the sword wheeling maniac. This is uh, up the street from me in my shopping complex. So narrowly avoided that one, actually pulled in. Yeah. Was that the one on no, the heroin? Yes. Right there, yeah. That Albertsons is uh, where I used to shop all the time. Used to. So when I pulled in and saw the yellow crime tape, I'm like, what's going on? Oh, guy got shot, I was trying to, I mean, he was uh, casing different places to decide which one that he was going to go in with this sword, swinging crazy. Um, one of my most vivid memories was when I was in elementary school, and this just happened to return to me recently. I was uh, waiting for my dad to pick me up, like always. These two people pull up in a car, and they're like, hey, your mom sent us. We're going to give you a ride home. And uh, something in me at that time just made me back away from the car, and I just shook my head. I'm like, I don't know you. And then they sped off down the street, and right behind them, my dad pulls up, like always. So narrowly avoided something really bad right there. But the closest thing that I have to, to this kind of an experience, um, back a couple of years in 1996, my oldest brother actually was the victim of a murder. And he was actually shot in the back of the head by a, a man who was training to become a Henderson police officer. So um, that's a little bit of a memory that, that will always stick with me. Uh, it's not something that you get over easily. I was pretty young at the time. It was pretty violent, um, 
and pretty extreme, but the other thing that I can draw from if I can lighten it up a little bit, with my fitness background, I actually use that in one of my novels, uh, the Demon Hunter series, because what I have going on there is the man is actually learning his trade to become a hunter of demons. So what I did is I pulled from my training and I actually incorporated a lot of the martial arts skills that I learned, a lot of uh, what I dealt with during competition, and I put that into the novel. So like Chris was saying before, you can you actually draw from personal experience and add that and sprinkle that into you or to your novel and it makes it just that much more realistic uh, that maybe somebody might who has gone through something similar might attach to it. So and it's mostly just creative. You get an idea from different sources and then you play with it, plot it out if you do that sort of thing and then um, just basically your creative juices go running, but um, what I was talking about was actually drawing from different areas of your own life experience and adding it into that specific fiction just to pump it up and, and makes it, it makes your characters a little bit more three-dimensional uh, and rounded um, and so that they jump off the page, but it is mostly from imagination. And, and another aspect of, of this is a creative nonfiction, but it, it's um, for fiction, if you're going to do historical fiction, which is really popular right now, you want to make sure you're going to do that straight. Yeah, so I can incorporate my background. Because for momentum 